Hey guys, welcome to EO, where we review electronics for our pleasure and for your gain. I'm Jonathan Pixel, and this is Chris Index. Um, and today we'll have Samsung's uh, flagship phone, the Samsung Galaxy S3 with us. And then afterwards we'll be talking about some launchers so you can really optimize and use your home screen a lot more efficiently. So we have the S3 here. Uh, what are some of the interesting statistics about it? Well, what's really cool about it is that last year during the fourth quarter, it took the market by storm. It took 11% of the market share and sold more devices than even the iPhone. Granted, it was before the iPhone 5 came out. It really did a good job to really um, take to the markets. And you know, it's really packed with a lot of features, and we're going to detail it. So it's going to be a long video today. So we're all going to do. Well, we got their website here to help us out as we go through. Um, one of the first things, you know, you notice how thin it is, right? Yeah, it's, it's one of the thinnest phones we've had. It's go thinner ahead. than the uh, iPhone. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a plastic, so you, you, you deal with that. It's not quite the aluminum casing that the iPhone has. But it's just downright thin. Very sturdy. Uh -huh. um, going through the features, you know, it's really intuitive when you use it. It's got a lot of these motion controls. You know, if you get a call, you can set it face down, and it'll cancel the call. Uh, We'll, we'll start with Smart Stay, and you know this is a feature they advertise. You know, with his daughter and his father sitting down on a couch, and once the girl falls asleep, the phone turns off because she knows she's no longer looking. So I guess it's a combination, you know, of you know proximity and facial recognition. Have you ever gotten it to work? Have you used it yet? Uh, the icon does pop up when I'm staring at my phone when I'm watching a video. I feel like a lot of times it does keep the screen on for another uh, cycle until it times out again. But I'm really not sure if this feature is working for me right. I just don't know what all it does. Sure. But possibly the best motion command that's part of the phone is the direct call. And basically, when you're in the text message or any other contact and you take the phone and you raise it to your ear, it senses that motion and automatically dials. So you no longer have to hit the button, the green call button, or anything like that. And how many times do you accidentally dial someone that way? Well, it's true. No longer do you just have pocket dialing. You've also got this weird thing where you just, you know, you flip your phone down a weird way, then all of a sudden someone's on the phone with you. Um, that has definitely happened to me, and more so recently. I'm sure that's great for class time, you know. <laughs> Texting someone up, oh, they're yeah. there on the phone. Uh, Smart Alert's pretty cool. This is a feature that I really love. Basically, whenever you get a notification, it's face down or, you know, in your pocket. And uh, maybe you'll move your leg later, but whenever you pick it up, or whenever it moves, it vibrates, letting you know you got something going on. Additionally, it's got the LED light as well. I see here we got this uh, social tag thing. Yeah, it's uh, got a lot of sharing features, you know, the really specific, you know, um, later on we'll talk about it a bit more in the sharing tab, but you can tag people in your contacts uh, into your photos, you know, you can sort them by people and who's in the photos and uh, geotag your photos. It, it really does a good job at, you know, synchronizing all that information. Uh, I don't really use this feature, it doesn't really appeal to me, but you know, if, if your mother likes to just share all your baby photos and she wants to tag every one of the baby, you know, share that with Facebook. Going down, uh, we got S Voice, and you know this is a really cool feature. It definitely got some room for development, but it's a voice assistant. So if you've ever heard about Siri, well, you're on the right track. Uh, now I know the other day you asked it to tell you a joke. Yeah, it was it was an okay joke. Yeah, they're they're, they're pretty terrible. Uh, you double hit the home button to bring up voice assistant. Tell me a joke. And uh, we got. It takes a little while. Yeah, it it, it does take a minute. Ooh. And I do know that... Oh, the, the joke. It's the same one. Oh, good. Um, it says, uh, what do you call a pig that does karate? Pork chop. Wow. Uh, the volume was off for that. What is Morse code for horse feathers? This is one of my testing phrases that I like to use. Both S Voice and Siri both use a, a company and website called Wolfram Alpha for its information. Here's the answer to your question. And basically, you can ask it caloric information about foods or a quadratic formula, and it will give you a pictorial representation of that information. So here, you've literally got the Morse code to spell the word horse feathers. And okay, now it's gone to uh, it hit something. Now uh, I do know that the voice seemed a little, not, I wouldn't say glitchy, but it was just it wasn't well, very clear. Well, that's very actually clear. not the stock voice there. That's actually an I IOVNA, I believe is the name of the app. And uh, it, it's... Uh, uh, text engine or text-to-speech engine that I put on the phone. The the default voice is a little bit worse than that, and obviously is in British. Sure. But you know it is a little bit slow. I find that it ha normally has a lot of problems recognizing my voice. I find that when I'm using uh, speech-to-text within like you know a messenger or you know voice dictation, and that 
uh, technology provided by Google inside the phone, that that is so streamlined. You speak, and as you're speaking live, it's writing into your text message exactly what you're saying. And I really have no problems with that. That's good. Any other features we got here? Uh, we're just going to briefly go over all the sharing options. Uh, S-Beam, it's basically the same generic NFC technology that's in a lot of newer phones. Uh, what's really funny and stupid at the same time is that Samsung has taken the NFC feature and rebranded it S-Beam. And basically, whenever you're inside an app, you can long press on the screen and send it via NFC to another person's device. But that device also has to have SB, meaning it has to be another Galaxy S3. And how many people have you run in with that? Um, well, you know, it's a really popular phone. I actually do have a couple of friends that do also have an S3, but I have never used this. Um, I use NFC when using uh, actual NFC patches and things like that. But those work great. I've seen that happen. Yeah, but, you know, I really don't use this. Um, they've got a lot of streaming options as far as going to a TV. Um, and all share is like Samsung's technology. And we're not really going to go into that. Um, but uh, moving on, you know, it's, it's designed after nature. It, is there a gimmick? And what we've got here, you know, you've got dandelion on the screen. But what pisses me off about this phone is, you know, you're on the lock screen and you unlock it and it goes bloop, bloop. And every, every time you press a screen or type a key, it, it leaves this water droplet sound and you can't change it. Wow. You cannot change it. Maybe with a root you can get in there and you can modify the setting. But it is the one thing that I think designed by nature just should not be. Yeah, I feel like the alarms on this phone. They are nature sounds. Oh, that's going that doesn't wake me up. They it does not. They just serenade you. Here, I'll I'll pull one up now. You're a pretty uh, heavy sleeper there, and I know you you need something a bit more than some nature to get you up in the morning. Oh come on. So you've got all these different alarms, you know, walk in the forest. Oh, that's just gonna put me to sleep. That's yeah, gonna wake me up. It's got nature sounds. It's water. It's uh, walk on the seaside. Okay, that one's a little bit loud. That one's a little bit loud. Yeah. You know, the only one I could use was this one here. Which that's, doesn't sound too naturey, but that's just their. That's yeah, just, that's underwater world. Uh, sparkling mist. That just wants to put me to sleep. What's really funny though, there's been about two times where I forgot to change the setting to an actual decent <laughs> alarm, and it, it has woken me up. But I guess it's just the sound, but I, I would never pick it on purpose. So, got over the, most of the cool, nice features. What are some of the downfalls of the phone? As I talked about, you've got the nature found. You've got a little bit of a limited feature for some of its sharing options, because you know, everyone has to have the S3 in order to use them. But you're going to have those problems with any phone. Um, the size is one thing. You know, it's 4.8 inches. It's nice that it's super analyzed. It's really bright, crisp, saturated colors, rich uh, blacks. But you know, a lot of people just simply won't like a phone that large. What's great is that later on, Samsung released the Galaxy Axiom, which is literally just a smaller, more compact, and not quite as powerful phone. Yeah. Um, and so you know, that's going to be a lot of people. But you know, you're moving up even bigger once you hit the Galaxy Note. And no, it's just too large. I mean, I feel like this could be a good sized phone, but I would like to protect the phone. Well, you know, I actually have a case right here. Um, this is the case that I use on my phone. It's a Ballistics Galaxy S3. SG Max, and it comes with a holster and a clip, and it's basically a, a three-layer type deal, which I'm finding is really popular with a lot of smartphones these days. It's got a hard case on the outside and a rubberized inside to absorb any shock. And then, of course, you've got your screen protector for the glass. Although that's not really an issue, because with the S3, you've got cornering Gorilla Glass. Sure. Um, um. And it's actually rumored in the later, for the next one, it's actually going to have the newer type of Gorilla Glass, just version 2. So as I'm putting this case together on here, you're your phone's starting to increase in size, so mm -hmm. now it's not the slimmest phone anymore because you got this huge case on there. Well, yeah, it's one thing I was definitely looking at in my old phone. It's like one of those battery combinations where it's in the case and really beefed it up. I could barely get it in my pocket. You know, this case does a pretty okay job at keeping it thin. Yeah, I mean, um, it's still fairly thin. The ergonomics of this is really great. I don't feel like it's really a, a huge phone. You know, when I have it on a holster, it's not even in my pocket, so it doesn't bother me that much. But it sure does protect it. Yeah, because. Last night you just dropped on the cement. Watch it. I did. Two inches. That's yeah, I cool. swear to God, I was like dropping it on furniture. Uh, these rubberized pads, they just they do charms. So what are some of the other accessories you can get for them? Um, well, you know, Samsung has a lot of things for it. They've they've really brought out um, a lot of the features. You know, uh, this guy here is a, a desktop dock and a battery charger. You know, this is something I actually own. And like I said, my last case, I had a battery embedded in it. But you know, having a spare battery means that I never have to actually worry about having a charge. This charges about three hours. The phone lasts maybe ten hours. So you know, I'm never without power to my phone. Uh, 
you know, they, they've got their own flip cover, and it's, it's a, it replaces the back of your phone, so it's not as flimsy, and it's got a flip front. You know, that's going to get scratched up, so, sure. you know, whether or not you're interested in it. Um, you got your dongle for your TV, so you can stream all your media from your phone to your TV. And they've also got this. Um, this was originally called the, the Galaxy Pebble, and it's basically um, maybe like a mini iPod shuffle that syncs in with, into your phone. Um, so, you know, now people aren't really buying dedicated music devices anymore. They, it's all in their phone. The iPhone plays their music and makes their phone calls. But what's weird is that we're going back towards an accessory to your phone. This has its own battery, and you don't have to worry about wasting the time on your phone to play your music. Now we come to the part of the show where we talk about some of the different apps we have. And yeah, and uh, today we're, we're going to focus on the launcher apps. Uh, a launcher is basically the look and theme of your home screen. It's um, the bottom row of soft key apps. Um, and, you know. All the icons, background. Yeah, you can theme it. You know, yeah. it's uh, additional wallpapers, all that kind of thing. It's literally the theme of your phone. And uh, so what I like to use is. Apex, which completely clones the stock Jelly Bean experience. So it's something you would find on a Nexus device. Additionally, as you can see, it's automatically rotated that it knows it's on side. A lot of launchers won't do that because there's a lot of scaling problems you end up having. Now, I personally like to use the uh, Go launcher, mm -hmm. which I feel like there's more ability to customize the icons, the size of the icons, the background. You can change every soft key to whatever you want, different images, and you can create your own themes from, from whatever you want, really. You know, I've used Go Launcher for a little bit. One thing that I personally don't like, you know, it's got all those advertisements for all the other Go apps, Go Contacts, Go Mail, whatever, and, uh, you know, I don't, I don't need all that kind of stuff. I actually do use most of the, a lot of the apps. Like, the on switches here, those are really great for saving battery life, and I use them all the time. Yeah, you know, I have a specific app that does on my phone, you know, that, that's something for later, but, uh, um, they're both very good. There's Go, there's ADW, mm -hmm. there's a 3D Shell, and there's Apex. Those are some of the big names. Um, you know, the first thing I did when I got my phone was replace the launcher. You know, TouchWiz, you know, they really made an improvement, but it just wasn't what I wanted. Um, it might have been the first app I downloaded. Yeah. And what's some of the other news we can uh, talk about? Um, I know Samsung right now is technology where they're working on a flexible display. And, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of rumors that it's going to be incorporated in that phone. That would actually help in protecting the screen from cracking and being uh, dropped. And you know, I don't know what technology uses, but if it's OLEDs, you know, they're, those are those type of displays that you can literally roll up the LEDs. But what you're getting a lot of times is you're getting a lot of dead pixels with it. Yeah. So if they're using that technology, hopefully they've improved it enough. I'm Jonathan Pixel. And I'm Chris Index. And this is EO. Next week, watch for the Wii U.